Okay, welcome to our second video on discrete math on the Praxis 2 for the 0061 test. Um, here we have a question which says, which of the following relations is not an equivalence relation? So an equivalence relation, it is reflexive, right? It is symmetric, and it is transitive. And I'll, I'll go over what that means as I go through these examples. So first of all, we have is similar to over the set of all parallelograms. So let's take a parallelogram. Um, I'll just draw a little square or something. There's there's a parallelogram. And now I have another parallelogram over here, right? And they're similar. And one over here, the three. Well, what do we know? Well, let's say this is the first one's called A. And it is similar to B, which is, and then B is similar to C. Well, that means that um, all the corresponding angles are equal between B and C, and all the corresponding angles between A and B are equal, so it makes sense that all the corresponding angles between A and C are equal, and that's the transitive property, right? If the sides are proportional between A and B, and the sides are proportional between B and C, then we can make that leap, right, that transitive property, which goes both ways here, um, that the corresponding angles and sides are proportional between A and C. So for its being similar, it's transitive and symmetric, right, because this goes, this goes um, both ways, right? If A is similar to B, B is also similar to A. If B is similar to C, C is also similar to B and also um, is similar to is also reflexive. A is similar to itself, right? So A, choice A over here, that is an equivalence relation. We're trying to find one that's not an equivalence relation. Next we have is, is equal to over the set of all n, m by n matrices. So you have a one, two, three, four, five, six matrix, right? That's going to be equal to another matrix, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which equals another matrix, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here, if our first matrix, A, equals our second matrix, we'll, we'll call that B, and we know that B equals matrix C, then A, then a must also equal C, right? That's its transitive property. And each matrix does equal itself. That's a reflexive property. And since we're dealing with equality, equality, right? If we had A equal B, then we know that B equals A, right? So is equal to, and that makes sense, is of course an equivalence relation. Um, the answer here is C, actually. And in, in it's, it's perpendicular to, because uh, let's say we had a line A. Right, there's A. And line A is going on at, uh, along its way, or whatever, and then line B comes along and it's perpendicular to it. So B is perpendicular to A. Right, we could write that B perpendicular to A. Well, is B perpendicular to itself? No, so it's not reflexive. A is perpendicular to B if B is perpendicular perpendicular to A, so it's symmetric, but also it's not transitive, right? If if B is perpendicular to C, here's C right here, and A, okay, so B is perpendicular to A, and B is perpendicular to C, but B is, is not, excuse me, A is not perpendicular to C, right? So A is perpendicular to B, B is perpendicular to C, A and C are not perpendicular to each other. You can see them right here, right? They're parallel to each other. So that's not an equivalence relation. And then is congruent to over the set of triangles. Well, again, if we just congruent, right? Two shapes are congruent if they're, they're equal, but in, in opposite locations. So if I have these three congruent triangles, I'm just turning them a little bit each time. Let's say that their angles are exactly the same. They're just in different locations or whatever. So um, we have we have A, B, and C. Well, if A is congruent to B, 
and B is congruent to C, then A must also con be congruent to C. Any triangle is congruent to itself. And also, if A is congruent to B, B is congruent to C. That, that is an equivalence relation. So in this problem, uh, the perpendicular scenario was the non-equivalence relation. Here we have the relation uh, is a subset of satisfies which of the following properties. So first, again, let's go over reflexive. The reflexive property, what is that? Well, again, reflexive says, when we're, when we're working with it, that every element, right, we don't know what we're looking at, but every element is related to itself in the in whatever we're looking at. Here we're looking at subset. Uh, some common examples of um, properties that are reflexive, or right, first we have is equal to. And that makes sense if you think about it. The number 2 is equal to itself, 2. It's reflexive. Another example is, in, in this case, is a subset. Now, why is that true? Well, if 2 is a subset of the group, right, of even numbers, 2, 4, so forth, um, isn't 2 a subset of, it, of itself? Yeah, sure. Right? 2 is in this group here, it's itself. Another common example is division, or divides. Um, if you have a number 3, and you can divide it by itself, right? you get 1. You can always take it, something and divide it by itself. That, that's reflexive. Um, I guess, actually I'm not so sure about that now that I think about it. Um, divides... Um, what about zero? I'm going to come back to that one. I'm not so sure about that one. Because okay, you, you can't divide zero by itself. Um, anyway, uh, is greater than or less than or equal to, right? Is greater than or, or less than, I should say, less than or equal to. Why does that make sense? Well, you have the number two. It's, of course, it's less than or equal to itself. It's equal to itself. And those are some common examples of reflexive. On the other side, we have irreflexive properties. So, for example, is not equal to. Right? Every, every number, 2, is equal to itself. So it's, there's no number that's not equal to itself. So that, that's irreflexive. Um... Another one is is a proper subset of is a proper subset of. So this is this is a little bit different from a subset, and what that says is if you have something that's a subset of a is a subset of b or whatever, um, but it's a proper subset that where a is not equal to b. So in other words, you can't have, like our scenario before, one element being the set of itself, right? That, that would mean that the subset and the set are equal. So, so when that happens, 2 can't be a proper subset of itself. That's not possible, right? Um, just like before, 2 can't equal itself. That's not possible either. Those are, those are irreflexive. Uh, and we can change the last one. It is greater than something else. I mean, how could 2 be greater than itself. It doesn't make any sense. Um, okay, so, so that's that's my extensive quick review of reflexive. So a subset, of course, is reflexive because every subset is a subset of itself. And of course, it's symmetric, right? If A is a subset of B, oh, excuse me, <laughs> that's, I don't know why I said that, is B a subset of, of A? No, not necessarily. Um, for example, if we have A is a subset of the, the group of even numbers, are all the even numbers a subset of, of the group of 2? No, it's not. And the, the last choice is transitive, and yes, subsets are transitive. If A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of C, then A must also be a subset 
of C, right? You can think of C as being a larger group than B, and A being the, a being the smallest group in here in terms of categories. So the relation is a subset of, satisfies the reflexive and transitive, transitive properties. And here we have a similar question to as the one before. It says in the in for the lines in the plane, the relation the relation is perpendicular to is what type of a situation? So here's two lines, they're perpendicular to each other, A and B. And so B is perpendicular to A. What if we had another line here? Um, C. Well, B is also, we can say, perpendicular to C. So B is perpendicular to C. Is, oops, I heard A. Is B, is B, well, if B is perpendicular to C and B is perpendicular to A, is A and, and, and C, are they perpendicular to each other? The answer is no. Right? Here's C right here, and here's A down here. They're never going to hit. So it's definitely not, that, that would be the transitive property, um, and there are only two points, two choices that offer, but not transitive as a as an answer. So it's either going to be A or B. Well, um, perpendicular lines are not reflexive, right? They can't be perpendicular to themselves, but they are symmetric. If B is B, right, is perpendicular to A then A, the reverse, must also be perpendicular to B. So if B is perpendicular to A, then we have the symmetric property A is perpendicular to B. So the choice is B. Okay, hope that helped.